here are some fractal curves that I generated, and this is rendered in Blender in 8K resolution. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's going to be a step-by-step -step process. And I wrote the process down for you. Basically, we generate this self-avoiding fractal curve. And today we're going to do you we're going to use an online fractal generator. And you could also use a Python script. I have some examples in my GitHub. We'll talk about that later on a different video. And the online version typically generates a PNG. And from there, we actually need to make sure that it has a transparent background and has a high resolution. From there, we can get a really clean conversion into an SVG, which is also done online using some free SVG tool. And then we can import that into Blender finally and then convert that into a mesh and then extrude it from there. And then we can apply some, some glassy effects or some other material. You can apply whatever material you'd like, really. And then that's it. We can render it. Done. All right. You can screenshot this if you'd like for your notes. And let's proceed. So let's go to a browser. I just have the Edge browser here. And I, I got Google, the Google search set up right here. So if you type in Google or Type into Google search bar, online tools, fractal generator. You should see a result that says online tools.com. And it says online fractal tools. If we click on this, then you'll see a website. It looks like this. And on this website, you might see a, a window pop up. And it might say they're selling some kind of subscription for something. But in reality, these fractals are free to generate. And I believe you get 10 free downloads per day. That's that's pretty much the limit. But regardless, it's it's free. So I want to recreate the fractal, the Pythagoras fractal, and there should be a couple of other fractals we might be interested in. Let's see here. I saw another one that was interesting. It's let's see, hexa Blake Levy fractal. Let's, oh, dendrite fractal. Yeah, that's another interesting one. And we can do the Fibonacci fractal. Let's, let's do like a couple of them. So you'll notice right away, if you click on one of these, then there is a default size. We can change this to a higher resolution. And the color of the background, you can actually click on this little icon here and you can crank this down and it will become a transparent background and then the color of the curve itself we can change this to like a darker color and the thickness of this line we can make it something like 100 pixels that's pretty good and now we can actually save this and just download it It'll be a png save i'll give it a number just one <laughs> okay, let's download another one. So we have a, let me see here, another tree, and then this tree is Pythagoras fractal tree. Okay, and we got to make sure that the transparency is there for the background, and then the transparency is there, and then the trunk will make this a dark color, and then black here, and same thing for this palette. Make it black. And that looks good. So we can save this. We can download it. I'm going to save it here again. Do number two. Let's go to another one. Here's another interesting fractal. McWhorter or McVorter dendrite. We can change this so that it has high resolution. And then the canvas needs to have a transparency. So let's crank this down here. Then the dendrite curve color, again, a dark color. And then the fill color should also be a dark color. And that's good. That's good to go. Yeah, let's go ahead and save that. Download. Save. Give it a number. Save. There you go. 
All right, so now we can go to the browser, and if you type in PNG to SVG Converter, you'll see this website. There are a couple of options you can choose from, and PNG to SVG.com seems to work pretty well. And you can close this little box. Now I can upload these three files, and it will convert them for me, and then we can download the SVG scalable vector graphic. All right, let's download this, save. It may or may not be as clear as we'd like it to be. There might be some missing something missing there. Let's let's double check that, shall we? So I just I just check that. Let me see. Downloads SVG number three. Okay, it's there. Never mind. And then number two, let's go ahead and download this as well. It's number two, and then download number one. Okay, now that it's downloaded, let's go ahead and close this. And when you open Blender, in this case, I have Blender 4.2.1. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and set this up here in a, in a moment, but we can go to the edit tab and then preferences and one of the tools you might find useful is called the edit mesh tools and basically to set that up you would go to the system tab and make sure that you select whichever render device in this case i have a rtx gpu on here 40 series. And under the network section, make sure you select this thing that says allow online access. Check this box. Now we can actually go to get extensions. And there are a couple of extensions available here. And if you are interested in installing any of these mesh tools that are available, you can type in something like mesh. And you might find some use out of this mesh tool. And then from there, you can just press install. And then TinyCAD, if you want to play around with that as well, you can possibly modify some of the meshes of the fractals that are generated. So you can simply install those tools optionally, and that's it. If it gives you any issues, you can restart Blender, and then it should work. All right, now we got that out of the way. We can get rid of this cube. And then this camera, by default, is always at this weird angle. So if we click on the camera here or on the right panel, then you'll notice that the rotation is this strange angle. And then it's the same for the Z, of the, ro the rotation of the Z axis. So we can zero this out. Make sure this is zero for the X, Y, and Z rotation of this camera then you'll notice that the camera will align itself to the plane. That's what we want. And from there, what you go, what you do is click on this toggle camera view. And there's this box that shows up. You can zoom in and zoom out or even smoothly by using the control, holding the control key. And then from here, what we can do is press the letter N on the keyboard and then go to view and click on this box that says camera to view. And if we click on in to close that, we now have control over where the camera is looking, where the camera is looking at. And then if you wanted to zero this out again, that's really up to you. But now at least we know that the camera really is aligned with the plane. So that's good. From here, we can go to the file tab and start importing the SVG, the scalable vector graphic that we just generated. Let's go to the download folder where you put the fractals and let's start importing the fractals. Import SVG. So we got our first fractal in Blender, imported as an SVG with a transparency. All right, so we got one. Let's move this out of the way first. So I'm gonna click Object set origin to 
center of mass. And then while it's still selected, it might be better to use the wireframe viewport here. Make sure everything's selected and then move, use this arrow tool here to move this fractal to the right. And now we're going to import the other fractals. So go to File tab, Import, Scalable Vector Graphic. Let's import the second one. And there we go. We got another fractal curve. And we can box select this like this. Use the arrow tool. And let's go to the object tab. This is all in object mode, by the way. Go to the object tab. Set origin to the center of mass on the surface. And then... Let's move this out of the way. Now, let's go import another one. So File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphic, and then the third one, Import SVG. There we go. So we have a nice row. We have a nice little row of fractal curves. <laughs> OK, now, in order to use this as a mesh, what we need to do is click on one section of a, a fractal and then box select the entire thing and then go to the object tab again. Go down to convert into a mesh. And now everything is a mesh. And in case anything is broken or separated, you can box select it again and press Control J. And it says no mesh data to join. That's good. That means everything's connected. But it's a good practice to check. It's like a it's like a double checking. Let's go so box select the next. Actually, select and then box select the second fractal, and I go to object, convert to mesh. And now there's a mesh. Control J, no problem. Next one. Let's click on the Fibonacci curve. Fibonacci fractal curve. And then box select, object, convert to mesh. And then just make sure, control J, no problem. Excellent. So now we are ready to convert this into a 3D object. So let's toggle out of the camera view and then get a little closer to this first fractal tree. Now, what we want to do is go to edit mode here on the top left. And you'll see this, all these vertices pop up. Now, we need to change this to the face select tool or face select mode. From there, we can select all these little planes on here. And you'll notice all these tiny little triangles, tiny little triangular faces on the geometry. We need to clean this up. So let's go to mesh. This is all in edit mode still. Go to mesh and then clean up. There's a tool called limited dissolve. So if we click on this, Blender would do its very best to merge all these little triangles together. And so now we have cleaned up the model, cleaned up the shapes. And you can do whatever you'd like with this. And while it's still selected, box select everything, right? And from there, what we can do is either use this tool here called Extrude Region, or you can press the letter E on the keyboard. But before you do that, let's get really close to the, the geometry and then press the letter E and then extrude this upward. And now it has it has turned into a 3D geometry. Okay. And by the way, it is a good idea to save this often. So let's go ahead and save this and let's call it SVG to 3D mesh fractal. I have so many Blender files on here. <laughs> okay. And now, 
while it's still in edit mode using the face select, let's select the entire fractal like this that's been turned into a 3D geometry. And then let's use the mesh tool again just to make sure that everything is not too, that, that it doesn't have too many, too many faces that, that we don't need. It'll clean it up a little bit more. And there we go. So if we go back to the rendered preview, then we will see this 3G, 3D geometry. Just give it a second. There you go. So now we got this 3D shape of this first fractal. <laughs> and we'll give it some optical effects here in a moment. Now let's go to the next one. But before we do that, we need to go to the object mode. And then we need to click on this or box select it. And now we can go to edit mode and let's return back to the wireframe viewport. Now, you see all the little triangles on there? We need to clean that up. So use the face select and then box select this geometry. Let's go to the mesh tab. Let's go clean that up. Limited dissolve. Once you click on that, give it a few seconds. It'll do its best to clean it up. There we go. Wonderful. So you'll notice that it's still selected in orange. So let's go ahead and get close to this and then press the letter E to extrude the geometry to whatever thickness you'd like. Excellent. And let's just make sure this is nice and clean again. While it's still in wireframe mode or wireframe viewport, I mean, the, the whole point of wireframe using wireframe viewport is so that you can select all of the faces without having to move around all over the place and just try selecting everything. You can select it all at once by using wireframe. It'll, it'll even select the faces that are not visible from from your particular angle. Anyways, let's go here and let's just make sure we clean this up. Limited dissolve, and that's good. Nothing, nothing needed to be adjusted there after that. Now let's go to the next one. Go back to object mode, and let's click this box. Select this next fractal, and then let's go back to edit mode while that's selected. And then we're going to box select this fractal again. Still, we're still in wireframe viewport. That's good. And then still using the face select mode. Now, what we can do is clean this up. So let's go to mesh tab, clean up, limited dissolve. Wonderful. Let's get closer and begin to extrude. And it, if you get this weird angle like this, you can lock it to the Z axis. If you press the letter Z on the keyboard, it will lock it to that Z direction. That's pretty good. And now let's go ahead and box select everything. And then go to mesh tab, clean up, limited dissolve. Wonderful. Okay, there we go. Now, we can just simply go back to object mode and all of our geometries are, are ready to be assigned to a material. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go look at a couple of viewport, a couple of different viewport hmm, shadings. There's a material preview right here. You can look at and then there's also a rendered preview. So it's all matte black. It tries to, Blender tries to assign the default. Like if there's, if the drawing was in black, then it will try to assign a black color, a matte black to the geometries. So let's go ahead and change the material one by one. We'll change this one. 
we'll click on the geometry and I go to the material properties icon here and you'll see this matte black color that's been a that's been added you can change this if you'd like if you want to keep it and then decrease the roughness and it will become kind of like metal like a shiny metal but if you don't want that then you can just say I don't, I don't need this let's let's get rid of it so while it's still selected and under material properties we can click on this new selection and then let's say we wanted to make this like glass there's this thing called glass bsdf now from here we can play around with the roughness a bit and then see what happens okay there we go so it applied some glass some glass features and i also realized i don't think we we set up the render property so let's go to the render properties render engine and i'm using a gpu so i'm going to put cycles on here and in my case i'm going to change the device to gpu compute there you go all right it looks kind of like frosted glass now <laughs> and let's go put the noise threshold to zero and then the number of samples we don't need that many let's go to 996 and then we don't need to use the denoise tool the light tree let's keep that on there the advanced tab we can click on this icon that looks like a clock it will maintain the the grain on the screen more consistently all right under light paths if you want to save on some rendering time you can click on fast gi approximation if not that's fine volumes you can keep that by default curves default simplify you can keep this by default keep this at the default values Vo motion blur if you're doing animation and you want to make it kind of realistic photorealistic then you can activate motion blur but we're not going to use that today now we get to the film section this determines what kind of roughness we can see like if there are any jagged edges you want to, the photo to have some form of jagged edges that are visible then this kind of determines that and by default it's 1.5 so even if we render it at high resolution, like 8K or 4K resolution, you'll see some you'll still see some rough edges at a distance. And you can kind of decrease that to some extent by decreasing this pixel width to something like 0.2 or 0.5. And if you want to get rid of the background color completely and then just keep the geometries, then you can use the transparent button here checkbox so that's an option if you want and then performance we want to use persistent data and the rest is okay that's good keep everything else default now let's go ahead and change this resolution to 7680 by 40 you know i i need to remember what 8K resolution is. 8K resolution 7680 by 4320. 43, 4320. There we go. And then let's go ahead and render the region, crop the render to region, and then the output. Let's save it in the download folder. And here's another quick note. If you select RGBA, this is good practice to select because, well, if you were to choose a transparency of the rendered output, then RGBA will be able to generate that image with no problem. But if you just choose only RGB, then for some reason, it doesn't really work well with the transparency. So that's, that's a problem that I've encountered in the past. Okay, now, 
this frosted glass looking feature it looks it looks fine let's keep that let's go to the next one click on this next fractal and i go to material material icon here and let's get rid of this assigned value and then let's just save this here and now we can click on the new button here and then go to the surface and then add a glass and there's a, a default roughness on there we can actually change the color on this so let's make it something like a like a blue color slightly darker and that's good there you go next one click on this fibonacci fractal get rid of the matte color click on this new surface glass and let's change this to perhaps red and then decrease the the brightness on it and now we have a rendered preview of three beautiful fractals look <laughs> look at that now we can save this and let's click on let's toggle the camera view just to get this in frame all right the other thing we need to fix i'll show you some interesting techniques that i've used so there's this light feature here right make sure this is not in the camera view okay and then if we click on this light bulb icon while the while this little light is selected we can increase this to something like 8000 watts point source light and you'll see this get a little brighter oh wow so as an american i'm inclined to do something here <clears throat> all right watch this object set origin to surface quick someone played the star spangled band <laughs> okay anyways <clears throat> back to business all right so that's that's one point source of light right that's pretty nice we can we can change we can change the light here to a larger radius maybe 0.8 or something that's fine yeah and then we can align the light to the center here roughly in the center so that's that's one way of playing around with the lighting a bit and another way another technique i'll show you here in a bit is while it's still in object mode go to the add tab and then add a mesh and then go to torus if we click on this you get this donut looking shape now while it's still selected go to this little tab here on the bottom left this is add torus we can increase the radius of this of this ring shape so i'll increase it to like maybe eight uh oh there's eight there we go all right that's that's pretty good and now we can move this up so you you need to use this move arrow here the arrow tool move this up here somewhere out of the camera view okay and then while it's still selected go to the materials tab or materials icon here and then add a material and then you can keep this by default that's fine but we are more interested in using this emission and you can pick whatever color you'd like and from there you can increase the strength of the emission 
so that this ring becomes a kind of ring light. So you can simulate a ring light in the rendered view, and whatever you see will be whatever you see here is going to be rendered just like just like an object would or a piece of glass that has been exposed under a ring light. So that's one of my neat tricks and it tends to perform pretty well. And it saves me a lot in terms of setting up lighting because the lighting, you can increase the di the the depth of this ring, you can increase the size or miniaturize it and you can make it make it, make the lighting consistent from many different angles using this technique so a little trick for you there tricks of tricks of the trade <laughs> and then we can you can play with the strength of the lighting of the ring light and then the main light that's there you can do what you like with it you can also Maybe the maybe the radius is a bit high, so let's just do 0.5. And then we'll move it up a little bit. There you go. That's good. <laughs> I think this is almost ready for rendering. There's one more thing we need to fix, which is this world icon. The background is going to be gray by default. So we can change this just to completely pitch black. And there is a way to actually change this to some other background color or maybe like a HDRI similar to um, like a VR setting, virtual reality. I'm going to play around with this brightness here we're just we're just about ready here so let let me do this here hmm. a little a thousand is a bit high so let me crank this down here okay so the strength of 80 seems to be seems to work pretty well or 100 yeah and the other thing is, if you wanted to add like a bevel to this to make it more interesting, you could go click on the fractal itself, this Fibonacci word fractal, and then go to modifier tab. This modifier, it looks like a, a wrench icon. Add modifier, search, and if you type in bevel, you can add a beveling feature to this. If we get a little closer to it, by default, this it only has one plane, so it makes one like a, a, a cornered edge here. We can play around with this and make this a bit smoother. So we can do 0 0.05 in the amounts or try to play around with the depth of this bevel. And then we can increase this to a higher number, something like maybe seven, seven segments. So it becomes more smooth. On the edges. There we go. Point zero zero two always seems to work pretty well for the sharper edges. Yeah. Or you can do point zero zero five. See how that works. Press enter. It's a bit smoother now. All right. So now we got this fractal curve with a smoother edge. All right. And yeah, I mean, you could do whatever you like with, with the rest of these settings. It's really up to you. This, this, is, this is pretty awesome. I, I really like using Blender for doing these kind of mini projects. And I, I sure hope you enjoyed this. Oh, yeah, that's better. I like this. I changed the roughness to 0.25, and it just seems to look better visually. And now we can start to render. So let's save this.
and then just go to render image and now the render will begin. I will upload this to Flickr. I'll make a 16K version as well. And it's going to look really nice. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, we spent like 35 minutes setting, uh, like getting to this point, but it's a step by step process. Super cool. <laughs> All right. So if we compare that with this other one that I made, look at that. I really like that frosty glass looking feature. And you'll see some grains when you zoom in close to it like that. But from a distance, it looks pretty good. The other thing is, if you want to kind of get rid of those grains more and more, then you just increase the number of samples. It's just that for really high resolutions, like 8K resolution, for example, or 16K, the number of samples that you use to render, it's it's not as required. The number of samples is is more, or should I say, it, it could be decreased. And it will actually be a lot sharper than, than the something like just only 4K. If that makes sense. All right. So now we're ready to save it. It's been rendered in 8K. So let's just go to download section and say fractals. Frosty. <laughs> Frosty fractals. Save. It's saving now in the folder. Let's close that save all right that's all i got for you today i mean i'm gonna go ahead and open that little preview there we go frosty fractals i'll i'll upload this here very soon and on Flickr, and then i'll have some more higher quality renders this this is something we were able to achieve with just 995 samples at 8k resolution but it's pretty pretty decent Anyways, thanks for tuning in.